Hello everyone, it's your backyard gardener. Going live uh, this Monday. Happy Monday to everyone. Take a while for everybody coming to the room because of the ads on the um on the live. So this is the time that I take just to get set up and make sure I have my chat up on my devices because it's complicated for me to read from the phone. Nadine Secret Garden, hello, how are you? Happy Monday to you, sis. How's everything going out there in Houston? Wonderful, wonderful. It's going pretty good here in Michigan. We um we had that first big initial snowfall over the Veterans Day, but we haven't had one since. And it has uh, melted, but we do have cold weather coming in, about 25 degrees Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So it's about to get super cold. It's been cold, but it's about to get super cold. So, can't complain. We haven't hit our first day of winter yet. But when we do, you got to have the mindset. When you live in the north, you just I just come to realize you have to have the mindset of, especially if you're not a winter person. For me, it doesn't matter. I can enjoy all four of my seasons. Winter is hard because I can't get outside the way I want to. But I have the mindset of, you know what, it's going to be here for some months. Just get yourself entertainment up, whether it's your, your cell phone, the games on your video, or whatever work that you need to do over the winter that you couldn't take care of over the summer. And get through it. <laughs> if you don't, you'll have the winter blues quick. And I don't want to get that before winter even starts. I'm going to thank you so much for being here. Nature 9 family, hello, how are you? Thank you so much for coming in. I can't stay long. Got to pick up my kids, but I'm showing you some love. Thank you so much. I appreciate that love. Thank you, thank you. We got six people in the building. Um, thumbs up the live if you don't mind and if you... Kim, can you please type in what state you're from? And if you know your growing zone, put it down so I don't know where you're at. Today, we're basically talking about... <clears throat> Miss Carola, hello, how are you? Thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate you. Today's topic is... Is it worth it? Is it all worth it? Is gardening expensive? And I think the answer that I've come up with for myself is that it depends on what level of gardening that you want to do. It depends on what kind of gardening that you want to do. Um, I'm pretty much... Suzette, hello, how are you? Thank you for coming in. I miss you, Suzette. It depends on what level of gardening that you want to do. If you are gardening... Um, from soil, if you are gardening hydroponically, aquaponically, it has its variations of how expensive it can be. Whatever expensive it is, it's a, it's the journey that you chose or the direction that you chose to take your garden. And Steve Rogers, hello, how are you? Marilyn, zone, zone 7B. Georgia, 8A for Nature 9 family. Welcome, guys. It's the direction that you chose to take your gardening. A lot of people, they do back to eating. Some people don't like back to eating. 
But this is my thing about any type of gardening that you prefer to do. What you put in it is what you're going to get out of it. Is it worth it? It depends on what type of gardener you are. If you're the type of gardener that's um, gardening to be self-sustained, or if you're the type of gardener that just garden because I, I want a fruit tree in my backyard, or I want to grow lettuce, it depends on if that if that is worth it to you. For me, it's worth it because now I'm gardening to self-sustain, and I'm also gardening... Um, for health. I want to grow more of my own fruits and vegetables. Let me give you a rundown on what went on over the week since you seen me last Monday as far as in our news here in Michigan. Food Forest Permaculture, hello, thank you so much for coming in. What happened was um, the current administration, the government, the president in Michigan is cutting, I think it's 700,000 people off of uh, EBT SNAP. April the 1st, 2020 uh, 20 is when this is going to happen. Ages 18 to 49. Now, here's the thing about that. 18 to 49. They feel as if 18 to 49, you're a young person, you're able to work. Single person, you're able to self-sustain. It didn't say families. It says single individuals from 18 to 49. If you are disabled, if you have children, you're not going to be affected by that. This is my thing. 18 to 49, typically, if you don't have any health issues, if you do have health issues, issues where you can't be mobile then you're probably on a disability side so you're okay over there but if you are a strong working body why can't you grow your own food i don't a lot of people was mixed um views about that um the government cutting off our president cutting off so many people so um, abruptly is what they said. I disagree. I don't think it's abruptly that he's doing it. He's been saying this from day one. Back in the last president, they also made cuts with the money. Anybody that was getting cash assistance, they cut that off. Everybody went into an uproar. Everybody went into a a panic that was getting cash assistance. This is my thing. You have to self-sustain. When you depend completely on government for your money for to feed your family, that's something that's not good. Um, I asked a young lady, I said, well, if, if this doesn't happen and, and, and your significant other leaves you, how can you take care of your baby? She stuck her chest out. She says, oh, I can take care of my babies. Now, mind you, this person has no job, no nothing. And I was just trying to sit down with her woman to woman and talk to her. Well, her theory of taking care of her babies was, well, I can get government assistance. You know, I could get Section 8 housing. But when, it's all, when all that goes away, when all that is not available to you anymore, how do you sustain? How do you take care of your babies? And this is the question that I keep asking people. If it all goes away, because it will go away, we're probably the only country that does it like this. Terry Smith, hello, how are you? Thank you so much for coming in. April the 1st is your birthday. April the 2nd is my grandbaby birthday. But this is the thing. If it all goes away, because it's going to go away, um, we're the only country that that have it. We're the only country that, 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 that gives the assistance. I'd rather have the health care. Like a lot of country over in Canada, you get your free health care and whatnot. We have became lazy. U.S. is one of the most wasteful, in my opinion, 
countries there is. We waste so much food. We waste so much food because we feel that we have it in abundance. We feel that it's so much an overflow of food that we have to waste this food. Or we don't need it. When we waste, that's because we don't appreciate it. We take it for granted. A lot of people tell me, well, I don't want to garden because it's expensive. I don't want to garden because it's, it's hard work. Why should I have to work that hard? Why should I have to break my back? Oh, that's taking us back to the slavery times. That's your state of mind. That's how you think. Gardening is the most beautiful thing because it gives you that sense of self-accomplishment. It also gives you that self sense of self-sustainability. And that's something that you want in your life. A lot of people is out here because government says that right now the country is doing so great. The economy is doing wonderful. Go out there and they're buying houses. They're buying boats. NJ Kelly, welcome. Thank you so much for coming in. They're buying houses. They're buying boats. They're buying new cars. But guess what? Angela Garden says, hello. Thank you for coming in. At the end of the day, if the economy shifts, you know about every seven to ten years we go through a, we, we go through our little um, uh, collapse in the economy. Haven't had one in a while, so it's about that time, recession. If the economy shifts, that mortgage company still wants your house note. That car company still wants your car note. That boat company, they still want all of that. They talked about people, it was a, supposed to have been a trend of people going into tiny homes. If you think about that, that started about 10, 12 years ago, um, maybe longer than that, when the economy had went down, people were downsizing. They were moving into tiny homes. They were moving into their vans and reconversioning, you know, redoing their vans and living out of their cars. We still got people doing that today. We still have people that are living in their vehicles today. We still got people that are living in tiny homes today. Because I'd rather do that than be homeless. This is the thing about being self-sustainable. Because I don't feel like if you have all this, this mortgage, if you have, um, and I'm some, you, some people, you got to have it. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. But what I am saying is that debt free is the way in the direction that everyone should be going. I don't care how good the economy is. I don't care how great the stock market is doing. I don't care how plentiful jobs is, debt free is a direction that we all should be going because that's the way that you can self sustain no matter what happens. No matter my, my mortgage back in the day when I had a mortgage, I think it was like three fifty. I only paid seventeen nine for this house, <clears throat> and that was back when the economy was bad and the housing. The, the prices of housing was low. I think we had, was at a, a, a 6.0 uh, for our mortgage. I paid the house. It was a 30-year mortgage. My note was like $250, maybe $300. I knew in my mind, no matter what happened, I could hustle me up $250 to $300 a month to pay my mortgage. I don't care if I lost my job. I can go out there and sell fruit. I can go out there and sell vegetables. I can go out there and jitney, take people back and forth to the store. Or whatever I needed to do, break leaves, cut grass, I didn't care. I could do it to pay that mortgage. That's the mindset that a lot of us have to think of. So when I hear people say, gardening is not worth it. When I hear people say that... It's too expensive. Maybe in the beginning, it depends on what type of gardener you are to determine how expensive it is. Let me get back into the chat for a quick second, and then we're going to move on. A 
Okay, um, NJ Kelly just stopping in to say hello. Thank you so much for coming, NJ Kelly. Guys, if you haven't smashed the like button, please do so. Angela Gardensons, good afternoon all. Glad to catch you live, and I am glad that you're here, Angela. I missed you. I haven't been seeing you in a couple of the lives, and I, I, I be looking for you guys. I do. Um... Miss Farola coming in, getting right to it. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much, Miss Farola. Actually, around the early 2000s when the uh, tiny homes movement began to grow, debt free is the best way. I agree with the um, debt free is the best way. Our mindset should be going toward that way. Please read the last comment. I have to fly by you now okay uh let me go up to food force thank you for coming in a bird with a brain the size of a pea can build its house feed itself and children raise a family and able to fly earthlings try to keep up please plant a food forest and feed you and your life feed you a lifetime Definitely agree with uh, food forest permaculture. Um, if you think about it, just like what he was saying, nature is the same as what we're doing here on Earth. You see the birds flying around. They used to say, well, they fly um, south for the winter. Some of them don't. They're still here. Those big old geese, they're out there, they're taking care of their family. They're making sure that they provide for their families. And they're building their nests, way pre prepping way before the winter because they know that the weather is going to change. And those are things that we should be doing. Those geese just want to make sure that they have a, those birds and geese make sure that they have a sturdy foundation for their family and their young. And that should be our goal. To make sure. Well, I don't care if your house. Is seven bedrooms. To two bedrooms. I don't care if it's brick or aluminum siding. It doesn't matter. Because what you make. Of your house. Is what you get out of it. It could be in the best neighborhood. Or it could be in the worst neighborhood. You have to make it secure for yourself. You have to make it fitting for yourself. Um, Barefruit Gardening, welcome. Thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate you. I missed you. Um, Rapists and False. I think I'm reading that right. Prophet Muhammad. Hello, how are you? Um, Carolina Gardner. Hello, how are you? Thank you so much for coming in. Dan... Dan, uh, Promaculture Food Force, thank you, Dan, for coming in. Basically, we're talking about, is gardening worth it? In this day and time, absolutely. If you don't know how to garden, you better get to learning how to garden. 700,000 people as of April the 1st in Michigan, SNAP, EDT, EBT, will be cut off. Ages 18 to 49 single individuals. That's a lot of people. Some of those people are college students. Some of you guys went to college. It's hard. I mean, y'all been eating all those ramen noodles because that's all that you could afford to eat going to college. We got college kids that's living in their van right now. They can't afford um, living off in the dorms. It's too expensive. If you get together with people, like-minded people, you can build a full a food force. If you got if you have two people that's in the same state that has the same passion about growing food, I feel like those two people should get together and make things happen. One of the things that I disagree with, with our culture, is that sometimes we're so busy trying to step over each other that we're not trying to raise up each other. And that's what we have to do. Come together, devise a plan, 
And let's make it happen. I'm going back into the chat today. Everybody is connecting with each other and speaking. Carolina Gardner, I don't look at gardening as a cost. I look at it as a way of life. We must afford a garden. Absolutely, I agree with you 100%, Carolina Gardner. And no one should look at it as a cost. No one should look at it as a chore. No one should look at it as this is, this is too hard. I don't have to sweat like this. Let me tell you something about our young people. They're so privileged right now. Their mentality is so privileged. I, I, look, I was a young person myself. I don't remember being like that coming up with my parents. You know, you, these uh, lobsters. Oh, if, if I ain't eating this, I ain't eating nothing. <laughs> In my mama household, then you would have starved. Okay. They don't know anything about beans. They don't know anything about rice. They don't, and these are filler foods. We know, you know, when kind of low in the refrigerator, pull out that bag of rice to kind of fill them up a little bit, extra scoop with that rice, post um, the meat, fill them up a little bit. They don't know anything about that. They feel like if they're going to Red Lobster, which is to me an IHOP, seafood joint but they don't know uh then you ain't popping <laughs> you know it's almost income tax time i don't know about y'all city but these people at income tax time here in michigan oh my god they get on my nerves i call them income tax ballers because they only gonna do it for that first two months when them checks start coming in, they're not going to think about how to prepare themselves. They're not going to think about, well, let me take a little bit of my income tax money and let me set it aside because I want to start a garden so that throughout the rest of the year, I can start learning how to be self-sustainable. They're not thinking about any of that. First thing they want to do is go out the, and, and buy hair, buy a car, buy clothing and I don't go to the mortgage they'll go and rent a new house we got to do better we got to do better income tax ballers that's what you y'all got them you'll see them in walmart oh i don't want this my son gotta have the best little um truck up there his birthday in january at the end of january we about to get our check You'll see them in there. Income tax ballers, they're the worst. Their attitude is the worst. You have to be self-sustainable. We're getting to that point. It's showing it now. I don't know of anybody in your household or out here in your state notice Walmart shelves is pretty empty in the uh, grocery department where the canned goods is. I don't care what day you go, those shelves are empty. Are we having a food shortage? A lot of people have been talking about it. A lot of farms didn't do well last year or this year because of the way the weather has been acting. Got a lot of rain in one spot. Other spots didn't get any rain at all. You got to understand if the farmers don't do well, you're not going to do well if you're depending on the markets. So these are things that we need to take into consideration. Four Horns Farm, hello. Thank you so much for coming in. Because that's what they do. They go by here. The people that profit the most around income tax time is the restaurants, the hair salons, and the car dealership. Those who profit the most. And trust me, before summer comes, those kids can tow that car up. But they still have that note because they're not even smart enough to pay for the car. Or get them a nice dependable car that will get them from A to B with no problems. No, no, I'm not driving that. I have to have me a Hellcat. I have to have me a Charger. Now, you know that check ain't going to be 
twenty, thirty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars, which is how much the used Hellcat or or a brand new one cost. So they finance it. June come, well for here, May come, sun come out, snow melt, guess what we see? The repo man creeping down the street. I was like, yep, somebody about to get their car repossessed. How I know it's the repo man? Because it says recovery. And once it's recovery on that truck, that's a repo man. I'm reading the chat. Guys, connect with each other. Get to know each other. Feel free to network. No self-promoting. No axing. Alexis, how are you? I miss you too, sir. How's everything been going? Too much rain. Darn near ruined my cantaloupe harvest, but I'm... I've gained valuable insight and information for next spring. Absolutely. A lot of us, I'm, and if it's too much rain for you, do you know it's too much rain for a lot of the farmers? So different ways of gardening, different methods of gardening, those are the things that we have to resource. If you are an indoor, we got one person, indoor-outdoor gardener. That means that she plants her garden indoors and outdoors. I'm doing indoors, do indoors over the summer. Barefoot God uh, just got her light. She's doing indoor over the summer. We're continuing, continuing to do it indoor. We got a super chat. Nathan T, thank you so much for the super chat. Big thumbs up for you and have a, a good week. Take care. Thank you so much, Nathan. I appreciate that super chat. Can one of my moms please drop Nathan's link if Nathan is a content creator? Check him out. Thank you again, sir. We have to stick together in terms of our mindset. Don't let nobody tell you it's too expensive to garden. Oh, I can't afford to garden. You can't afford not to. I keep saying that. You can't afford not to. It is economical. Okay, you go out into my garden. <laughs> you don't have to have the brand new gate out there. You don't have to build a greenhouse. You can build a hoop house. You can't look at other people's garden and say, oh, I want that. Or if you go over to somebody else's garden and they have 100 fruit trees, well, I want that, but I can't afford that. Start off where you can afford. Start off with your seeds. Seeds are seeds are um, not that expensive. Go ahead and start contacting these people and tell them you want a free catalog. This catalog is so thick, and I'm about to go through it this week and find out if there's anything in there that I want to order. And then network with people. Diva Jones 03 been giving away seeds the whole uh, fall. Barefruit been giving away seeds. Everybody on here has been exchanging seeds. They even had a, um, a box going around where the only thing you had to do was take something out the box, put something back in, and ship it to the next person. It don't get no easier than that. Actually, it does get easier than that. Start your first garden, save your seeds. So next year, you don't have to buy seeds. I didn't save any of my seeds this year. I kicked myself because out of all the seeds, I definitely wanted to save my watermelon seeds. But next year, I will be saving seeds. I don't care what's going on in my life. I don't care how much I got to do. I'm going to harvest my seeds. And I'm going to save my seeds because I'm telling you, if you don't grow from seeds and you grow from flats, okay, that's a cost difference right there. Flats is a little bit, a lot more expensive than a seed. Some of those flats.
last when you go out to that nursery. They're like they're like three dollars a plant, depending on what type of plant you get. The little four pack sales. You go to Home Depot and get their herbs and 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 and, and different things in their tomato plants. They can be anywhere from three to four dollars for one little burpee cup of a big boy or a beef steak tomato. So that's where you're looking at, oh, it's expensive. No, 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 no. Get you some seeds. You get about 40, uh, maybe 20, at least 20 seeds in a pack. Dollar store sell them. Miss Linda, uh, New Orleans Garden. She told us where to go. Go to the dollar store. Get your seeds. I have mail right here from Eric Hall. And he's over in um, Indiana. He just sent me so many seeds. I got to do the unboxing of uh, the mail call video for this. So many seeds of different pepper plants that this summer I'm going to dedicate a section of my garden to the Eric Hall collection, pepper collection. Those peppers... You can, you can make cha-cha, um, cha you can make salsa, whatever you want to put in it. Barefruit Garden, she just did a video on, for the whole fall of her collecting seeds, how to. I don't know how to do it. Go over to Barefruit Channel and figure out how to do it. She's showing you how to do it. Diva Jones is showing you how to do it. Angela Garden Sis is showing you how to do it. It don't have to be expensive. You have the resources right there waiting for you. Melanie Williams, thank you so much for coming. Guys, if you haven't smashed that thumbs up button, please smash the thumbs up for the host. I appreciate you. If you're having difficulties, oh, well, I don't want to grow because it's too many bugs. It's too many, like, we got to get past that. Look, I'm, 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 Every year I get a little bit stronger. I get it. I understand. The mugs freak you out. Those rabbits running across your yard freak you out. The pests will freak you out. But we have to take preventative measures. Ever since I put my garden gate up, the rabbits are still out there, but they don't mess with my food because they look fat cells can't jump, but only so high. And they can't get to the gardening part of my garden. So I, I cut that off. TK Tanae, hello, how are you? Thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate you. We have to think of a different mindset. I'm telling you, food is getting expensive. Things are changing. People are getting cut off of EBT as of April the 1st. If they're starting it here, they're coming to your state next. You probably already got the warning about it. Quit depending on government. If you can, don't wait until they kick you off to say, well, I don't depend on them anyway. Prepare yourself for it. Prepare yourself. Be prepared for whatever happens. Gardening is, is affordable. You can afford to garden. You just got to think of what type of gardening you want to do. I don't have enough space to do a garden. I live in an apartment. Well, let's see. Do you have a balcony? Do you have a deck off your apartment? Do you have a little area? Okay, you might not have none of that. Do you have a friend who has a yard who don't mind if you do a little container garden? Can you walk down the street? Can you network? I don't care what you gotta do. Talk to people. If you don't open up your mouth, closed mouths don't get fed. If you don't open up your mouths and talk to people about it, it's never going to happen. Let me tell you another thing that's going on in our city. And it's funny. A couple of weeks ago, as of December the 2nd, I think it was, recreational... Marijuana is now legal. Backyard garden has been like that. No, 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 no. Recreational. It was medical marijuana was legal, meaning that you had to have a doctor 
to say that you have an ailment that gave you a card to go in the dispensary and buy your medical marijuana. Now, as of December the 2nd, which has just passed a few days ago, any person over 18, I think it's 18, with a state ID can go in a dispensary. I don't care if you, you ain't got no ailments and buy marijuana. If y'all think that them dang on Popeye chicken lines was long, you should have seen the line out in Ann Arbor at the dispensary. They showed it on the news. That line was miles and miles and miles and miles and miles long to get into a dispensary to buy marijuana. Now, here's my problem with that, whether you smoke or not. Again, we're depending on somebody else for our needs. If you have a medical condition, and marijuana is one of the ways that you cope with your medical condition, whether it's through rubs or oil, those dispensaries are expensive. Why not learn how to grow your own? They said that you can grow up to seven plants per adult in the household. Why is the line all the way, miles and miles away, when you can grow your own? Because we're lazy. We don't want to learn how to do that. But I got a medical condition, and I need this. I need my rubs. I need my oils. I need my vapes. So they say then why don't you learn how to grow it yourself? Now, jobs, this is the setup. You got to look at it down the line, okay? And gave us medical marijuana. Then he gave us recreational marijuana. We could do all of this now, right? Now they then took away, as of April 1st, EBT and SNAP cards ages 18 to 49, single individual, because they feel like in that two mile long, somebody in there had a, a bridge card in their pocket. You can, you can make a way, you beg for what you need, but you buy what you want. Hmm? You're begging for what you need, you're buying what you want. That's crazy. You out there getting that marijuana, but you're not out there getting, getting your groceries. You'll show that ID and scan it, whoop, boop, on that scanner to get in that dispensary. And then you go to the store and you pull out that EBT card, swipe it, boop, to get the food out the grocery store. But you're on a recreational use now. That don't make sense to me. Not in Louisiana yet. I believe, Alexis, that it is going to happen in every state. I believe Michigan, California, and whatever state, uh, over even over there in Canada, is legal. It's a pilot program. It's a pilot program. Well, let's see. Let's give them let's give them medical marijuana. Okay, let let let's let's give them recreational because it's gonna be out there. But I, I need a piece of that pie. They're illegally selling it, but government say I I need to regulate this like big tobacco. I need to regulate that. When vaping first came out, if you remember, when it first hit the scene. They kept trying to regulate vaping. It wasn't because they wanted to, to make sure it was safe. They knew that people had stopped smoking cigarettes and started vaping. And they were saying that it was good for their lungs because they didn't have all that smoke. Well, Big Tobacco was like, well, we, 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 we need to charge you such and such and such and thousands of dollars to open up a vape shop. It's the same thing with 
uh, the dispensaries. So when the people was coming up with the money to open up the vape shops that was certified by Big Tobacco and they were able to sell the stuff, they couldn't figure out a way to regulate it where they could put it on the shelves and you could buy it and they get more money because they wanted more money. So now they're like, okay, it ain't worth it to us. So we're going to shut it down. So now you have stories of people who have been vaping as dying of lung cancer. Now, now they, they're saying our young people are dying of young, lung cancer. Now here's the thing. Some of those vapes be doing those, what they call back then, big clouds. And they got these big old puffs of smoke coming out of their mouths. And they're trying to make the biggest cloud or whatnot. But cigarettes ain't doing it too. How many people have lung cancer? How many people have trachs in their throat because of smoking? So now they're saying, well, it's, it's, it's too many kids doing it. Guess what? It's too many kids smoking cigarettes as well. If you're going to be fair, be fair all across the board. They're not being fair. Be fair all across the board. It's kids that's 12, 11 smoking cigarettes. Newport 100. Long. I don't smoke, but I go in the gas station and somebody in, my, in front of me get the Newport. So, there it is right there. Well, we got, we got to stop. We have to stop telling people not to, um, don't put those fruity flavors on there. Because that attract the kids. So, stop putting those uh, fruity pebble vapes on there. Because that makes the kids want it. It makes the adults want it too. And guess where the Fruity Pebbles at now? In the dispensary. You get the Fruity Pebbles uh, Kush. Fruity Pebble uh, Gorilla Glue. Fruity Pebble whatever. It's in the dispensary now. That same name. Why? Because it's marketing. Do it have a sweet smell? Do it, do it, do it smells delicious like watermelon? It's marketing, but you won't go out and you won't grow your own. You won't go out and you won't grow your own food. Same thing with marketing now. When you see mukbangs on here, and they got all these lobsters, and they tearing up the lobsters, and they dipping it in that sauce, and they dipping it in that cheese and that butter, and they're eating it, and it's... 11.30 at night and you lay it in your bed and the first thing you get up in the morning you want to run the red lobster because that's the only thing that you can think about. That's a part of marketing as well. So a lot of these big time YouTubers they'll send them that stuff. But is that healthy for us? Because in our mind with our young people they feel like well lobsters we live in our best life and we eat lobsters and crab legs. Look. Lobsters and crab legs has always been the roaches of the sea. They eat everything at the bottom. Young lady ate a big lobster. Y'all, this lobster was so big. That lobster had to be 100 years old. Why you want to eat that? Why you want to eat that old lobster? You could let that lobster continue to live in that dang on sea. Nope. That's right, Alexa. Sea scavengers. That's all there is. But they think that they're living their best lives because I, I, I'm, I'm smacking on this lobster and they breaking it open. They got them long nails. That's nasty. First of all, you got stuff all up under your nails and you. That's not good. So, but you don't want to go out there and get your hands dirty gardening. Why not? 
Go out there. Get your hands dirty gardening. Oh, I don't want I don't want that up under my nails. Cut them off. Get your hands dirty gardening. Shirley Cook and Stevens, hello, how are you? Thank you so much for coming in, sis. I appreciate you. We have to get in the garden. We have to learn how to be self-sustainable. Stop depending on government. These people is going to be hurt. And the first thing, this is what blows my mind. The first thing that people do when they get something taken away from them is panic. Oh, I ain't going to go hungry. If I got to break into somebody's house and get what I got to get, why you got to do all of that? Why you got to, you planning already to do that, but you're not planning the garden. You're not sitting down with yourself and saying, you know what, I'm going to make it through this. I got to eat. Yeah, you got to eat. But if you're a single person, why, why you got to eat all of that? If you're a single person, you could take, if you and if you're working, just put it in your budget. And your budget might be a little tight with rent. Okay. But you got to figure out a way. You got to eat. If you work at a restaurant, Chili's, you're a single person, they feed you there. You got to figure out a way. Don't break into my house trying to go in my refrigerator and taking my stuff. Because that ain't cool. Get back into the chat. Guys, if you haven't smashed that like button, please do so for the host. We are talking about gardening. Is it expensive? Depending on what, what your goals are for your garden. Is it worth it? Absolutely. It is. If you got to eat, it's worth it. If you want to be healthy, it's worth it. Let me tell you something about a garden. You get a couple of things out of a garden. You get health. You get self-accomplishment. You get exercise for sure. And you get peace. Those things right there, all of those are stress relievers. Stress reliever. We're so stressed out right now. We we sick. That's how stressed out we are. <laughs> I'm looking at the comments. All right, so. Guys, check out each other. In this, we got some amazing channels in here. We got TK Tanae, Shirley Cook and Stevens. Check them out, check them out, check them out. Carolina Gardner, Miss Farola, Angela Gardner Sense, Melanie the Moderator, Suzette, thank you guys so much for coming. Alexis, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate, appreciate you. Right, we got 15 people in the building, and I think it says 19 thumbs up. If you haven't smashed that like button, hit that like. If you ain't a gardener, think about it. It's cold outside. Start small. In containers. Last week we talked about, are we growing enough? This week we talked about, is it worth it? It is worth it. We got to bring more to the table, especially if you have kids. It's absolutely worth it. A lot of people that I know, cheese ain't even cheese no more. I'm going to share something with you. People are eating so much cheese in these little mukbangs, and they're eating so much cheese on their sandwich. I'm a cheese lover. I had to get away from it. It was killing me, like literally. Cheese was killing me because something they didn't changed. It makes me break out now. It's something they, especially this processed yellow cheese. Something they have changed has. I I I have reactions to it, so I don't mess with none of it unless it's provolone, and and I don't even mess with that that much. 
So we got to think about what we're doing and we got to we got to do it differently. I'm telling you, learn the garden. It is worth it. Just for the peace of mind itself is worth it. If you got babies, if you got kids, you definitely want to learn the garden. Take them out there with you. Teach them. You're giving them a trade. You're giving them a skill set. So you want government to give you a fish, feed you for a day? Or you want one of these gardens on here to show you how to fish and feed you for a lifetime? Which one? Four Horns Farm say cheese is not supposed to be yellow orange. And I'm telling you, it's about as orange as it, it as the inside of a pumpkin, and it is making people sick. Boils, blisters, making people sick. It made me sick. I don't mess with it. I can't mess with it. I sneak and mess with it. I pay for it. And it ain't worth it. That ain't worth it. Gardening is worth it. Eating healthy is worth it. Why are we all of a sudden promoting so much unhealthiness? They're, they're, they're jumping off buildings. They're, they're planking. You know, anything that's of a danger, anything that's dramatic will get you views. We got self-sustainability channels. We got off-grid channels. Those are the channels that we need to watch because if or when the grid goes down, are we going to be able to survive? Are we going to be able to make it? You got to be you got to be prepared for it all across the board. We got people showing you how to put your survival kits together. We got people showing you how to garden. We got people showing you how to live off grid. Those are the things that, and the skills that we need to learn. I don't know. Look, we've been without power here for a whole week in the middle of winter. It was cold. And when you call DTE, all they could offer you was an apology. We're working on it to get it back up as soon as possible. Well, that, that didn't keep my family warm. But guess what? I have a space heater in the basement that takes um, K1 oil. And I keep it for emergencies. I brought that thing up here. I went and bought me some oil at the gas station, some K1 uh, kerosene oil. I closed off most of the doors. We went to one room. I opened up the window for a little bit of ventilation. And I lit that thing up and we stayed warm. You have to learn, know how to kick into survivor mode. Everybody can't run to a hotel. Especially if you out there buying all those lobsters, you can't afford to go to a hotel. You got that big car note. You can't afford. You see where I'm going? I'm not saying it's a negative that you drive a, a, a fancy car and live in a big, beautiful house. But what I'm saying, work toward self-sustainability. Work toward debt-free. One of the ways is to grow your own food. Now, you not you if you don't have livestock and you're a meat eater... You're not going to be able to grow 100% of your food for your family because you don't have the meat. But if I can curve off a little bit of my grocery bill and put that, that $50 a month somewhere else, that's a win-win for me. Or if I could put it up, that's a win-win for me because that's $50 I got saved for an emergency. Thank you, Nadine, for coming in. I appreciate you. So, the, absolutely, Angela Garden says, these are things that we have to think about. These are things to, to consider. 
Uh, Carolina Garden says her baby girl loves to garden. She's four years. Yes, my grandbabies love to garden. They love being out there in the garden. They love everything about gardening. They're amazed that a seed can grow into such a, a big plant and give you food to eat. Or a plant. So guys, we have to start um, changing our mindset. If you're on the fence and you're thinking about gardening, uh, I can't afford it. Oh, it's too expensive. It's not. Because if you can dig a hole in the ground, if you have a small yard and you can get a corner and you can work with that soil, do it. Right now, seeds is cheap. Walmart got all they, if they got any left, they got them on sale. They're trying to get rid of all that old stuff and bring in the new. Blood meal, bone meal, 50% off. Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, and the garden department. Uh, 511, fish emotion, seaweed emotion. All that stuff is half off right now. When the spring come, when spring first come and the garden center start putting out their soil, that's soil from last year. Guess what? It's, it's inexpensive. It's 50% off. I did a video on that where I went to um, Home Depot and their garden soil was super cheap, like $1.99 a bag. Their potty mix were $2.99 a bag. That's the time you grab it up. You don't have to go so over the top with it. You don't have to overthink it. As your skill set increases, You'll learn how to make your own soil. Free resources all day long. Saturday, my grandbabies was raking a yard. I said, y'all know what y'all raking? I said, you raking up free soil. All the leaves. This is not soil. It breaks down over time. Compost. You got the room compost. Steve Rogers, hello. It can be expensive in the beginning, but if you learn how, because I got people, what they're doing, Steve, they'll buy, I'm seeing them, they'll buy a bag of soil for that top price right at the peak season of gardening where everybody is out there trying to start a garden and it's real expensive instead of getting it on the off season, they'll buy soil. And then they'll turn around, put it in pots, be a container garden. And the end of the season, they'll pull the plants, throw the soil away. That's the craziest thing ever. And when I first started gardening, y'all, confessions, I used to be one of those people that would throw my soil away instead of amending the soil. I only did it one year. You got to amend your soil. That soil that I got out there, I think this year I only, like, added, a, added maybe... Two bags, and I that's because I caught them on sale because they were busted bags and they were like a dollar. I wasn't gonna walk away from a bag of soil for a dollar. Um, learn to amend your soil, learn to, to, to make your own potty mix. It ain't nothing but somebody didn't put some perlite or some vermiculite in there. Learn how to make your own soil. Make your own growing medium. Learn to put your nutrients. If you stick something in the ground, it is not going to grow. If you got clay soil, it's not going to grow. You have to amend your soil. And these are the problems that a lot of people are having as beginner gardeners that's growing in the ground. You got to condition that soil. Well, the trees don't need condition. The forest don't need condition. Those trees has been there for a very long time. And those tap roots has went all the way down to the earth and poured up all those nutrients out that soil. There's mycorrhizal fungi all through that soil that's helping that. There's rock dust. There's everything that that forest needs. That's why that forest stays green because when those leaves fall and those trees go dormant, that leaves fall down on the ground goes right back into the soil composting in worm castings 
They love it. Your plants is going to love it. Zero to Homestead. Hello, how are you? Thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate you. Miss Green Thumb. Hello, how are you? Thank you for coming in and welcome. Carolina Gardner gave some advice. Let me let me go up. Let me go up because I like advice. And I'm going to tell you someone who does a excellent, excellent demonstration of how to make your own soil from nothing. Who does, and, and garden thrive the whole, let me tell you something. I keep saying it because the girl is smart. Diva Jones 03. old tree rotting in the way. When it was time for her to fill up her tires that she grow out of, she went over there and it just brittle. It's like soil. Still breaking down. Wood chips. That's why I am a fan of wood chips. Once those wood chips is packed and you got a nice amount of thickness on there and you get to pulling those wood chips back over time when they didn't break down, you see all that white stuff, that micro... Uh, that um, mycorrhiza, that, that, that beneficial bacteria that the plants so love, I'm telling you, you will be amazed. And wood chips are free. No, you got to go to Home Depot and buy. No, you don't. That, that stuff is dyed anyway. You can go to your um, extension office. You can... Uh, they're cut down trees every year. They just got through cutting down a bunch of trees over the winter um, on the west side of town from me. And I see all these grind up wood chips and I'm like, if I had a pickup, because I get the manpower, that's never the problem. But if I had a pickup, I will be knocking on that door asking them, can I scoop those wood chips up before they come back and pick them up? And I'm sure a lot of them will say, yeah, because they don't know. And I will throw them things in the back of a pickup and I will bring them to my yard. These are the resources that we have to use. These are the things that we have to think about. Dan Organic Food Forest, 100% worth it. Gardening is 110% worth it. So I'm telling you guys. If you're not gardening, try to garden. Start off with a small garden. Because, you know, again, we want everything to look cute and perfect or whatever. But the mindset should be that soil. Conditioning that soil. And making sure that you have a good growing medium. Nutrients to your soil. And making sure... That you can grow your own food. Watch a video. That first year might be a little on the pricey side. But that's this is the thing. My parents used to say. You hear the little old saying all the time. Wrong one built in a day. Don't worry about. Well I want a big fabulous garden. I want a big long garden. I want to be. I want my garden to be like Dan Food Forest. Start off small. Start off small. Because I guarantee you, if you go back to Dan's videos in the beginning, he's added over time. More and more. Start off small. Go back to my videos in the beginning. I had a little wood pallet. And I think I had like four buckets on top of it. That was my garden. Go back to the beginning. Over time, when you get that rhythm... And you get that feeling of accomplishment, you're going to expand. Next year will be bigger than the year before. Do it now, before it's too late. Before you're so desperate that you have to go out there and do something. Before you try to come through my window for some food, learn how to garden now. Before you lose your freedom or your life, learn how to garden now.
it shouldn't be a big shocker that people are getting cut off of EBT and people are getting cut off of their bridge cars and people are getting cut off of different things because look to me it was gonna happen some people were getting it that did not need it we got to be self-sustainable we got to learn how to grow our own food it is worth it 100 percent worth it purple paisley planner hello thank you so much for coming in i appreciate you guys please feel free to network please feel free to um Get to know each other. Do it the right way. DD Pharmacy, hello. How are you? I miss you. I'm, I'm, I'm over the moon right now because I'm seeing a lot of people that I haven't seen before back into the live stream. Thank you so much, Bear Fruit. Thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate you guys. So I'm telling you, if you don't know how to garden, learn how to garden. You're in the right place. You're amongst good people. DD Pharmacy, for example, she has her garden at home, and she also garden in the community garden. This year, hopefully, I will take you on the journey with me. I can't take you through the Master Garden course. I don't, I'm, I'm going to have to focus there. But when I do my community hours, I will definitely take you there and show you. There are communities that are building or, or, or producing lots. You don't have enough room? Go buy a lot. Call down to your city council. Find out, go in your area, because I know it's a house tore down somewhere. Guess what? That lot is for sale. Okay, it's not adjacent to your home, which will probably be better for you, because we all want to look out of the window and see our garden. But guess what? If I don't get that lot behind me, I'm surrendering it. I don't get a lot. I have to use one of the lots because I own lots. I'm going to have to start using some of those lots. If I have to go and visit it, I have to go and visit it. But invest. That's the investments for long term. And guess what? This thing you can pass down to your children. They can pass down to their children. That's why you have to get them involved now. Because you can't say, all right, um, I've gotten old here. The deed to the lot. This is the, here's the deed to my food forest. They're going to look at you like, what you want me to do with this? You never taught me how to, how to garden. Remember, they were up in Red Lobster living their best life. You, 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 you got you to gotta bring them in early. Bring them in with you. You got to show them the ins and outs. You can't just give them the keys to the car and say drive. Get them involved. Get your kids involved. <laughs> say I'm ready for taxes again so I can be by my garden and supplies to sustain. Absolutely. Invest it. You ain't got to invest all of it. But invest it in something that's going to take you through. If you need a car, okay, go buy you a car that's not going to give you a lot of problems, that's, that's not going to break down, that looks good and dependable, but you ain't got to go buy a, a, a Charger Hellcat or, 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 or a Mustang or a Corvette. Go buy you something that's dependable to take you and do what you need to do to get you through life. Even if it's for that month, that, 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 I'm sorry, for that tax season. And as you grow from there, then you can upgrade to something else. Because I'm telling you, the Hellcats that they're driving around here, is, I swear, I thought somebody was giving them away because so many young people was driving. And insurance here is expensive. I mean, very expensive. But I will say this. They're going to kill themselves driving these cars or kill somebody else. And I'm going to tell you, it's more economical for the people to sit out there than kill and kill themselves. For the government it is. 
That's one less person that has to be fed. Oh, open up the weed shops. Let them just smoke their little brains to death. Because guess what? Every job that's about a something is going to send you to the clinic to have a blood test. To check for drugs. A background check. Oh, well, I got a DUI. That's going to come up on there. Oh, well, I, you know, you don't think that they're going to check for you if you're smoking too? Now the law is, say you pass a car, and I, I don't know how, how deep it is in your city, but I can ride behind somebody. If that person is smoking, that smoke comes into my car. My whole car fill up like I just smoked a whole ounce. Guess what? If I get pulled over, and that officer, and I rolled that window down, and he's smelling that coming out of my car. He don't even have to prove that I was smoking or not. He could ticket me for that. He could ticket me for that. So now you got to go through the lawyers. You got to go through litigation to prove that, hey, I wasn't smoking. The car in front of me was smoking. Blood tests, all of that. No. Nope. He can just write you up a ticket right then and there. If somebody, if you go pick up Pookie off the corner, hey, I need a ride, it's cold, gonna get a ride, oh, Pookie. If Pookie get in there smelling like a whole ounce and light your whole car up and then you go a, a, a block down and you get flicked, boop, boop, guess what? Pookie just caused you all kinds of problems. Because even though they see Pookie sitting over there and his little eyes is glazed over and squished all up, and you clear us today, somebody getting a ticket. So you have to understand to whom much is given, much is expected. They feel like, oh, 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 Detroit, Michigan is lit. We, we, we got marijuana. You can go in there. You can go through. The, they even talking about putting vending machines out, y'all. Vending machines. That's crazy. What, 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 what? Out of so much that you can give to the state, so much that you can give to the city, why this? Because <laughs> Pook, you know Pookie be smelling like a whole ounce. Why this? You got to think about it. Is it a setup? And see, I'm always like, okay, here come my cousin. They being too nice, and they won't. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, they normally don't come over and visit like this. They want something. What you want? You giving them, you giving, you giving the state all of this. You, you, you allowing them to make money. You allowing them to grow it. You allow them to travel with so much on you from one place to another. You giving them so much. What you want? Well, guess what? As of April the 1st, I'm going to take 700,000 people EBT card away. And I guarantee you, they get into that dispensary. Because they, they got to have it. They going, they, you take my EBT card away, but they get into that dispensary to get, to get that ounce. To get that half ounce. They going to get it. Because we beg for what we need, but we buy what we want. How many times people get paid, and the first thing they do, as soon as they cash their check, is go to the restaurant and eat. Well, I done worked hard. I deserve this. Your landlord is waiting on you. DTE, the electric company, is waiting on you. The water company is waiting on you while you're sitting there eating steak. I take care of your business first. Then you just sat there at the table. You done wind and dine because you was feeling living your best life. You spent all your money, at least $50 of your electric bill money. So you go to call in DTE. Um, can I give you half of this? DTE, like, no, you have to make whole, whole payments, which is our electric company. So then there you go calling your auntie. Your mama, your cousin, your sister. Uh, can I, um, I really, really need this. I got to pay my bill and I'm short $50. And if I don't pay it, they're going to cut me off. There you go begging for what you need. 
but buying what you want. If you wouldn't have bought that steak dinner over there at at at, at uh the steakhouse, you would have had your money. If you wouldn't have went to that dispensary and waited two hours in line out there in Ann Arbor, you would have had that rent money and that DTE money. Come on, people, we gotta wake up. We gotta wake up. It's not that serious. Multiple hustles is what we have to do. And one of them is grow your own food. How's that a hustle back y'all got? Because it's putting money in your pocket. Back into your pocket. So get out there. Hustle in that garden. Grow your own food. Make money. Live self-sustainable. Try to go debt free. What is your goals? I don't normally do you new, you new uh, year's resolutions. But I'm telling you, my goal for the past five years, and I'm about three and a half years in, these were my short-term goals, or long-term goals, I'm sorry, was to become debt-free. Doing pretty good. I'm doing really good. I've had, over the past 15 years, I've had one, two, three, three mortgages. Gone. Gone. They were 30-year mortgages. It ain't even been 30 years. The mortgages was gone in five years, thank God. Five, five years. When the housing cri crisis came and they start offering people buyouts, well, hey, if you could come up, you, you owe 50000 on this house, 50000 on that one, 20000 on this one. I know hundred, two hundred thousand dollars. I'm not. Mm -mm. It's no house worth it to me. But they offered discount buyouts because their housing market crashed. Well, nobody, everybody was walking away, and it wasn't benefiting them. They didn't say short sale because short sales will get you in the end too. They said, "I'm gonna give you a discount buyout. This way, it ain't gonna affect your credit." And you get to keep your house. You owe fifty thousand on the house. They, I tell you, no lie. They called me up on the phone. I was behind on my mortgage. I didn't want to refinance. That's a trap too. Modify. That's a trap too. Careful of that. Oh, well, you can get money out of your house. Be careful of that, cause that can mess you up as well. They turned around. And they said, this is when it was real bad. Y'all remember it because a lot of people lost their home. They said, if you come up with $5,000, we're going to give you that house. Five grand. We're going to give you that house. Guess what? I don't know how I came up with five grand back then. But I came up with it. And I ain't do no crazy stuff. But this is how doors was opened up to me. I got a job doing property management for a guy that I had met. And this is why I'm telling you, you got to be nice to people because you know who's, you never know who's going to be your blessing. I met this guy at the gun range. He was a Chaldean guy. He couldn't fill out, he was trying to get a CCW. He couldn't fill out the paperwork because he didn't speak English. He didn't, he spoke English, but he didn't read it. And everybody that he was kind of trying to go to to ask for a little help, they brushing him off. It was like he was a plague or something. I'm sitting there, I'm filling out my paperwork. He said, excuse me, miss, can, can, I don't speak English. And it was hard for me. He said he don't write or read English. I, he could speak it, but his accent was so thick. It's kind of hard for me to follow him, but I followed him. And he asked me would I help him with his paperwork, and I said, yeah. He pulled out his license. I wrote down everything. I wasn't doing anything. I wrote down everything for him, Ba 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 ba. Got it. He said, can I, can I, can I get you something, please? Just let me, you want something out the vending machine? You did it? No. No, thank you. I'm fine. Um, you can't say no to them because they, they still want you. 
please just let me give you something. I said, okay, you, you can give me a, a bag of chips or something. I'm telling you, this guy, this happened 10 years ago. He's still in my life today. He is now my business partner. And let me tell you how good God is when you bless. And God will give you overflow to bless somebody else. I became his property manager. The same property, some of the properties that I was losing. Remember I told you? That's how I was coming up with the money. I started getting all his properties together. The money was just coming in for me. Ran that money down there. They contact me again for the second house. Another $50,000. This one, they say, well, we want $10,000. And I'm like, I'm going to get $10,000. I just worked my tail off to get the five. But they gave me three months to come up with it. When you can go to certain people and you can ask them for a favor because all you got is your word. You ain't got no credit. All you have is your word that speaks value. Because some people, that word is not enough. But when they know you and they know you're a good person, that word is good as gold. You get nothing else. That word is gold. Guess what? I came up with that $10,000. I got both of my deeds in the mail as promised. Deed it over to me. No liens. No mortgage, no attachment, solely in my name. Walked away with my houses. Now I'm able to not worry about my houses being empty because people done lost their jobs because you know we're the big three here. We got all the factory. You can't tell me what the father won't do. He will do it. You got to trust in him. Talita 360, good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming in. And you don't know who's going to be a blessing to you. And that's what you have to understand. You always got your hand out, but you got a closed fist. That means you're not giving. Open your hand and sometimes give. That's how you get your overflow. Sow purpose seeds and reap what you sow. Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate you. They took your message down because all capital letters. That's considered spam. Buddy said, um, that's right. Credit means nothing if there's a integrity in the individual. Tell it. Yes, you have to be able to be a person of your word. Can't go around trusting everybody. But start with self. If I tell you that I'm going to do this, do it. If I tell you that follow me and I'm going to show you and you know that that person is a good person, take that chance. You never know. I have did my hour and 25, guys. I started a little late. I want to thank everybody that came in. Those that stuck around, those that came in a little late, welcome, thank you. Think about growing a garden. It is worth it. Things are changing. Cuts is happening. Also, I'm, I'm not scared of what 2020 is going to bring as far as the economy, but I am preparing myself. Because sometimes when the sun is shining every single day, a rain cloud is somewhere in the mix, and it's going to be, you have to be prepared for that. Barefoot Gardener, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate you. Dee Dee, thank you so much. J3DS Farm. GS Farm, I was so close, and I tried not to look at your name. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You got you to gotta tag somebody. You got you to gotta get somebody, get a neighbor, get a friend, get a cousin. Try to convince them to gardening. Try to get them to get on that, that same mindset if you got a loved one. Try to get that loved one in the garden. If you have the money, go buy them a pot. 
Sprinkle some seeds. Start it easy. Show them how easy it is. You can tell them to read the free resources. Tell them the economical way of gardening. It doesn't have to be the 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 extra lights, the prettiness. I do it because that keeps me in the garden. But when I first started, it wasn't all like that. But as time went on, yeah, I started my beautification because that is, has became my peaceful place. I spend more time in my garden now than I ever have in all the years that I've owned this house. I never utilized that backyard. The backyard is my favorite place in the house, period, on the land. Is out there in that backyard. You want free buckets? Go to Sam Club. Go to the bakery department. Go to Kroger's. Go to Meyer. Say hey, you guys got any buckets back there? You know the the whip uh, that they do the cakes with. They throw those buckets away. Go go to the different restaurants that do corned beef sandwich. I got a bunch of pickle buckets. You want food grade? I go to the corned beef place. They have the but they know me now. They have the buckets stacked up for me. Yeah, they smell picklish. Bring them home. Cause they ain't gonna wash them out. But I get them home and I wash them out real good and I let them air out. I drill some holes in about all my fig plants is in those buckets. I even can get free brand new milk crates from the Coney Island up the street. The lady saves them for me. She said the milkman never comes back to get them. He said he don't want them. Those things are expensive. I'll grab them and I'll bring them on to my property. And I'll sit my um, pallets on top of them to elevate my garden up. Because I don't want to always bend down. So I elevate them up and it keeps the rabbits off of my stuff as well. There's a party supply place. Maybe about five miles. He'll give me free pallets where they have stuff to come in. He got plastic pallets, wood pallets. It's ways you can do it. People have built garden beds from some of everything, creative ways. I showed you last spring, last summer, how to build a garden bed, a raised bed, out of um, fist, fence panels that were on sale at that particular time. For like a dollar fifty a piece. It don't have to be expensive. It's your mindset. It's how you think about it. It's how which way you want to go. Don't try to do it all at once. Don't go out there buying a whole bunch of trees and you don't know nothing about keep taking care of them. That's when you get frustrated and waste your money. I'm not a citrus citrus person. I haven't um I have a citrus tree coming. That my sister ordered for me. But I know nothing about citric. Citric trees and stone fruit trees are two totally different types of soil and growing. So before that tree get here in April, I got to learn how to take care of that tree. Because one thing about it, I don't want to waste nobody money or time. If you buy something for me, I'm going to perfect it and I'm going to treat it just like... I, it, the money came out of my pocket because I'm not going to waste it. But if that's not what you know about, don't go to Lowe's or Tractor Supply and buy all these trees and think that they're going to grow if you just dig a hole and stick them in the ground. Especially if you got bad soil or clay soil. You got to amend that soil. And the best way to do that is compost down in the soil. Dig a hole. Get your food scraps, throw it down in the hole, put dirt back over it, try to pack it down as best that you can, and let the worms come and eat it up and poop it out. There go your worm castings. Plants love that. You got a, you got a fire, y'all burning fires this summer, this winter. You got your, um, your, your chimney going. Your fireplace, use that wood ash. It's good for your plants as well. Research, research, research. Thank you everybody for coming to the live. I appreciate everyone that hung out with me. If you haven't given this live a thumbs up, 
give it a thumbs up, Miss Farola. Thank you so much. Melanie, the moderator, thank you so much. I hope that everybody have a wonderful day. I didn't get a chance to read back into the chat too much. I'm, I apologize for that, but I'm passionate about this garden, and I want everybody to try and grow a garden. TK Tanay, thank you so much for hanging out with me, sis. I appreciate you. Guys, I hope you got a chance to network. I hope you got something from this, um, this live stream, from this chat. And I will see you guys either in your video or the next video. Happy garden, everybody. Have a great day.